How's it going ladies and gentlemen? It is Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're going to take a look at using maggot size to estimate the post-mortem interval or PMI. So first off, let's talk about the life cycle of the fly. All right, so the birds and the bees, let's talk about the flies and the maggots. All right, so you got a female fly, you got a male fly, and they do the things that flies do. And they, you know, have a fertilized egg, we call an embryo, and it gets laid. Now, how does this embryo become another adult fly? Well, first, it needs to hatch and become its first instar larva. And basically, the instars, they're just talking about, like, for insects to grow, they need to molt and shed their skin in order to get bigger. So we have this maggot. It's its first form, first instar. It's going to eat and grow, and it's going to have to molt and shed its skin. And that's when it's going to become the second instar larva, which is going to do the same thing. It's going to eat and grow. It's going to have to shed its skin to become the third instar larva. And once that guy's eaten enough, uh, he's going to start to become a pupa. So pre-pupa becomes a pupa. And then this is like kind of a hard casing where it's going through uh, all of its changes to be, emerge as another adult fly. So these cycles take uh, you know a certain amount of time for each one, and you can take a look at how long that is for each species of fly in order to determine, hey, if I had a maggot that was that big, how long does it take for a fly to develop to that stage? And you can estimate the postmortem interval based on that. So, but wait, don't maggots from different species all look the same? How are we gonna know what species of maggot we got? Well, the, probably the most straightforward way to figure that out is what we call controlled rearing. And it's basically just, all right, let's collect some maggots from the body, the, the crime scene, and we're going to separate them. We're gonna feed them so that they can continue growing. We measure them first so we know how big they were when we collected them. And then we control the temperatures and we give them food and we can calculate the degree of days. Basically, how long does it take the maggot that we collected to become an adult? So you figure out that time and you can figure out, well, how old was the maggot then when we collected it? So once they become an adult, you can look at the adult and figure out what species it is. And then you can go, all right, well, if it took 10 days to become an adult since we collected it, let's figure out how long uh, it took the maggot to grow to that size when we collected it. So we have some charts. These are the charts we're going to be using in class. Uh, and you can see we have four different species of flies. And for the lab we're doing, we I've color coded them. The, you know, I use pipe cleaners, so they're color coded, so you don't have to worry about the controlled rearing. Uh, just know that that's how you would do it in the field for realsies. Um, so we also don't, aren't working with real maggots. We're going to simulate them. I'm sorry for everybody who's looking forward to that. So let's take a look at the chart. How old is a sarcophaga maggot that is 33 millimeters long? So I find a sarcophaga, and look, it says L for larva. Down here it says P for pupa. And down here it says A for adult. So I know that it's a maggot or a larva that's 33 millimeters long. So it would fall right here. So I look over. That's about six days after death. So I go, boom, about six days. What if it was a 38 millimeter long musca maggot? So I find musca. I find 38 millimeters. Where would that fall? Um, where do you go, dumb dumb? 38 millimeters isn't even on here. So let's <laughs> instead of say 38, let's say it was 30. 30 millimeter long musca would be probably right here, right? The 30, and that would be about 10 days. Right, pretty straightforward, not so bad. What about this question? How old? We have musca uh, that are 18 millimeters and 28 millimeters. Well, let's figure out the 18 millimeter one first. So musca, again, 18 millimeters would fall right in this range. So that'd be about eight days. All right, what about the 28 millimeter one? Well, 28 millimeters would fall right in here. And that would be about 10 days. Now, if we collected both these maggots off the same sample, which one is going to be of more interest in determining the postmortem interval? Well, if we're trying to figure out how long the body has been there for, we want the oldest maggot because it was there the earliest. So which one's going to be the oldest? Usually, you know, we go based on size. You know, it takes size, time to grow. The bigger they are, the oldest they are. So it's going to be the 28 millimeter one is going to be the most of interest. So 10 days. Which would you go with? Eight days or 10 days? You go with 10 days. All right. So there's environmental factors that affect how the flies develop, how the maggots grow and, um, you know, mature. So one of them is temperature, right? Temperature is going to probably do, it's probably a little intuitive. The warmer it is, things grow quicker. So you look at the chart, and if it was, you know, 80 degrees, musca gets accelerated by one day, meaning that it's going to grow to that size one day quicker. 
So you would look on the chart if it said 10 days, but you know it was 80 degrees, you go, all right, well, minus one day because it grew quicker than it would have at 70 degrees that the chart's for. The cooler temperatures, it takes longer. It's delayed. So if I had one that said MAGA that size at 72 degrees would take 10 days, well, but the temperature was at 55 degrees, then you want to delay it four days. It took four days longer, so you'd have 14 days. There's also uh, drugs will influence the maggots growth. You know, if the person overdosed on cocaine or something, the maggots are eating that body, they're eating the, you know, the cocaine that's in the body as well, and that's going to affect how insects grow. So you can see some of these are sensitive to the effects of drugs. You give them a stimulant, it's going to increase the growth rate. And if you give it a depressant, if somebody overdosed on a depressant and the maggots are eating that, they're going to slow down as well. Uh, so yeah, and then habitat, you know, where is the body? What kind of flies are going to be recruited to that location based on where it is? So you can see some of these are found in urban and rural settings, but some of them are only found in urban settings. And you can use that information to tell you about how did the body get there? Are the bugs there consistent with the bugs you'd find in the area? Or are there bugs that shouldn't be on the body that are? So let's take a look. Here's an example. We got 20 millimeter Musca domestica found on a body. The average temperature was 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So I find Musca domestica. I look for 20 millimeters, which is like right about here. So that's about eight days, but it says the average temperature was 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So I look down 80 degrees Fahrenheit. How does that affect Musca domestica? It accelerated by one. So normally it would take eight days, but it was accelerated. So it got there sooner. So I minus one day. So my estimation would be about seven days. All right, what about this? Peophila nigriceps found on a body in the woods with an average temperature of 65 degrees. All right, so let's take a look. Peophila nigriceps. Uh, oh, I don't even give you a measurement. Hmm, I wonder why I didn't do that. Well, let's take a look at this. Peophila nigriceps is found in urban settings. And this one says the body was found in the woods. So what does that tell me? tells me that the body was moved from an urban setting, right? Oh, that's not how you do a bee. There you go, urban setting. Because that species of fly isn't typically found in rural areas. So how did it get on the body? Well, the body must have been in an urban setting before it was dumped in the woods. So that can help you out. All right, what about 26 millimeter Califora found on a deceased individual suspected of overdosing on cocaine? So 26 millimeters, Califora vomitera, that's this one. Let me find 26 millimeters. That is anywhere in this range. So I got 10 to 11 days, but it says suspected of overdosing on cocaine, which is a stimulant. So let's see, California vomitera, sensitive to the effects of drugs. So what I would say is, all right, well, I... I don't, I, I can't really necessarily quantify how much of an effect the cocaine had, but I would probably say, then you could say at most, it would be 10 to 11 days because the cocaine is a stimulant. It's going to increase it, the metabolism of the maggots they are going to grow quicker. Um, so that's what my estimate would be. And that's how you use the charts to estimate post-mortem interval. I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.